everybody, and welcome back to Alex Elite Golf, and welcome to the channel again, Carl. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for being with you. So, before we talk about today's video, let's just talk about your book, Carl. Tell us a little about it. It's been well received so far. Yeah, we've had some good reviews so far. It's called The Lost Art of Putting, and it is exactly what it says on the cover. It's about that's getting away from the more technical, scientific view of putting and connecting back to that artistic side, the ability to, to actually create putts out on the golf course and do the only thing that really matters, which is roll a ball into the hole, which you can have a perfect stroke, but if the things are not going in, you may be too scientific and less artistic. Sure, and I guess that would help not just putting, but the whole, the whole game. We really honestly believe that the principles in it, you can read it for putting, but you can apply it to any part of the game, you know, short game, long game, the whole thing, the, the, the principles just spread throughout the whole of, uh, all of your golf. Perfect. I mean, I've just started reading it and I can definitely tell that it's going to help me and my golf game throughout the whole game. So, guys, if you're interested in that book, interested in purchasing it, the link will be down below in the description. Be sure to check that out. So, today's video is all about how we can learn new things. Yeah. So, we just had a lesson. Yeah. And it's this time of year now where we're probably more inclined that we're going to try and work on our swing and build for next year. Um, so how would you go about it from your point of view and learning a new move that, or potentially the downswing, backswing, wherever it may be, that a coach has given you? So I'll, I'll play the, the student and the pupil. I'll pretend to be the coach, yeah. shall I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very good point. I mean, one of the things I would say to anybody listening, that there's a big difference between having information and turning that into movement. Yeah. We can we can know all of this stuff, but does it actually change your golf swing? And the only thing that really matters is does it influence your golf swing? Do you get better movement patterns? Now as a broad generalization, one of the things I would suggest that people become aware of I'll make this suggestion with a caveat that I, my, my principle is if something is working for you, keep doing it. But as I understand it from the kind of motor learning research, if you're trying to change your golf swing by working on drills, i.e. you're stopping at various parts of the golf swing, it's perhaps not the best way to learn. Because what happens if you're trying to stop the club in a certain part of the swing here, you actually have to decelerate to get into that position and hold it. And when the golf swing itself is a continuous, it's a form, movement, it's a continuous it? flowing form of acceleration. So one of the big suggestions I would make kind of comes from centuries old wisdom from Tai Chi. You know, you see people in, in, in parks making sort of beautiful swirling movements in slow motion. Well, Tai Chi is a fighting art. The principle being that if you can't do something slowly, you're certainly not going to be able to do it quickly. Sure. So I think a great thing that you can do, whatever it is that you're working on in your golf swing, is to actually incorporate that move within the whole motion but slower. Yeah. You know, I love the idea of standing there, whatever it is that you're trying to do, and you make the movement without stopping anywhere, and you actually feel exactly what it is that your coach has got you to work so on. So would you actually hit the ball if you oh, were doing oh, it? 100%. So tell me what it is that you're so working on at the moment. I've been really struggling with that over the top move. I think a lot of people do. Yeah. So I, my coach said to me, try and attack the ball more from the inside. From the inside, okay. Well, well my, my view would be, where in particular would you feel that in your swing? So I think more the downswing, definitely. Okay. I'd probably feel in transition, I was trying to shallow the shaft to give me a better chance. Okay, so my recommendation would be, if you can imagine that there's three gears, that you've got top gear, which is your full speed, second gear, half speed, and first sure. gear is kind of super slow. Super slow flow. So swing the club at what feels like a ridiculously slow speed. You don't stop anywhere, right. you keep a flow of motion, but that speed will allow you to sense whatever it is that you're trying and to do the with the golf. Doing, and, what, and what the body's doing. And what you should find with this, Alex, and what anybody listening should find with this, is that when you do this, you might only hit the ball 20, 30 yards, but you should hit a mini version of, what you're of the shot that you want. So, you know, if you've been constantly being a slicer, you start the ball out to the left and it tails away, or just goes straight to the right and further. If you can, with this, if you can start to see the ball shape in a different way, you know you're in business. So, should we do this now? So, we've got gear Absolutely. one, gear two, and gear three. Let's do that. So, so, this one would literally be what feels like super slow. So, you're very aware all the way through the swing, but you don't stop anywhere. That's the key thing. Perfect. So, you I've keep... got my seven iron. Yep. So, looking for it, kind of 10, 15 yards roughly. Perfect. So feeling a continuous movement, yeah? Continuous movement, sensing. Do you feel that? Definitely, yeah. I felt feel... I was definitely more aware of what the what body the was doing. Is, yeah. I know the strike wasn't great, but it gives me an awareness of what and that is. What's also encouraging and worth people thinking about with this is if you, if you do use video, I guarantee that if you actually make the movement in slow motion, you'll start to see the swing looking more like your coach has suggested it to be. 
rather than you, trying to paint pictures. Because the problem is, is if you try and make a change and you just go back to full speed, your brain will just automatically connect with the existing movement. Okay, so try one now at what feels like 50% of your normal effort and speed. Perfect. There's a little mini draw. Okay, so we've seen exactly there what you're after. The fact that the ball started out slightly to the right and turned over, you know, if we had a, a launch monitor here, the launch monitor would tell us that that path had to be probably slightly from the inside. And the face that's slightly close to the face path. slightly close to the path. So something's changed there from your normal path, which would be left and then the ball tailing away to the right. And I guess the kind of more traditional way people would learn this, I guess you some of you guys at home would try and learn this in bits and bobs and then hit it from kind of a, a stationary position here and then hit the ball. And I guess like you're saying about the acceleration, acceleration, it's been very hard to it's take very, that. The other thing is with what we want all of this to do is try transfer. We want it to transfer onto the golf course. Now in effect, if you're standing here and making slow swings, you're still actually making the movement that you'll make on the golf course, but in slower motion. As far as I'm aware, you'd never play golf where you stop here and stop there and then try and get it around doing no. that. So is it any wonder it doesn't transfer? No. And then the playability side of it is easier to take up. Yeah, exactly. So, so what, this, what I would say with this, Alex, that is, is really important is that it also heightens the focus. Because you know that you're aiming to swing at slower speeds, there's much more of a tuning in to what you're actually trying to do. With, with hitting balls at normal speed, we can get into the machine gun aspect, where we're just hitting ball after ball after ball and not really learning anything. So you could kind of do this, you could set balls in a range in sets of threes, couldn't you? 100%, yeah. So now we're on to the full speed. We'll do full speed and see if it's, uh, see if it's transferring. Really nice shot, that. So that one again started slightly to the right and just turned over a little bit. Perfect. So we'd say something has changed. Definitely. So with regards to kind of setting your practice plan, guys, I would definitely, like we said before, threat sets of three. If you get 30 balls at a range, you could do for the 20 balls at the start, do your set of three, yeah. and then have a bit of fun at the end in terms of shot shaping and then taking that to actually all the aspects. One of the other things I would recommend that the last maybe 10, 15, 20 balls, you try and replicate as much as you can course conditions. So all of a sudden, why not get on the range and, ha and have your yardage chart with you? Have your yardage chart with you, play some holes at your golf course, change the clubs, change to a much more of a random approach, approach. as opposed to the kind of block practice where, you, where you're working on your swing. So thanks, Carl, for coming on the channel. My great pleasure. Be sure, guys, to check out Carl's website, themindfactor.com, and also the link down below to his brand new book. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.